Hi, I'm Kathy Moore and this is Steps in a Journey as we travel together to the eternal life. This is quite a journey and the, the road is narrow but we have lots of friends to travel it with. And we hope that they keep us on the straight and narrow. But the, the readings that we're doing in this class are, are readings to help us lead a more spiritual life, a more devout life, a more prayerful life. It gives us inspiration, it gives us uh, th th things to think about and meditate upon during the week. And we thank you for joining us in this film and, and some people are here on Zoom. And we thank you for joining us and, and we hope that this is a, a nice little retreat for those who come on to YouTube later on to listen to it. We're doing Confessions by St. Augustine. We are on chapter 10. We've been reading uh, from chapters 1 through 9 is an autobiography of his life and how he discovered God and, and how he, uh, his past sinful life. And now, this, this, the book t makes a change here in chapter 10. And he's going back and examining his life and how one thinks and how one th thinks of God. So, we'll start with book 10 and chapter 1. Let me know you, Lord, who know me. And that's what this, this chapter is all about, is let me know you, Lord. Who are you? How do I love you? How do I know you? How do I know that you are God? Are these the questions he asks throughout the chapter? Let me know you, Lord, who know me. And, and the footnote says, the Confessions changes focus at this point and becomes more philosophical and theological. Here we begin to hear the self-examination of the Bishop of Hippo and his interpretation of the nature of knowledge and of creation itself. Let me know you even as I am known, O strength of my soul, Enter it and make it fit for you that you may enjoy it without spot or wrinkle. I once had a dream, and I think I underlined this because this went along with my dream. I, I dreamt that uh, I couldn't have people in my house because it was so messy. Uh, it wasn't fit for company. And yet, as I walked down the pathway, I came along across a little cottage. And this was also on my property. And I went in, and I could tell that somebody was living there. But it was spotless. Absolutely spotless. And when I read this, I said, well, this is that cabin. That The cabin represented... Uh, the body represents our, uh, I mean, the house that was all messy represented our body. We're just never ready for God. We're never ready for company. We're never ready for, for whatever God wants us to do. And yet the, the cabin is, God, is our soul. And, and hopefully we keep it spotless for the dwelling of God there. O oh, strength of my soul, enter it and make it fit for you that you may enjoy it without spot or wrinkle. This is my hope. Therefore I speak, and in this hope I rejoice when I rightly rejoice. The, the less other things of this life deserves our sorrow, the more we weep for them. In other words, the more we give up things, 
the more we weep for them and the more they ought to be sorrowed for. And, and the more they ought to be sorrowed for, the less men weep for them. So things that we should really be sorrowing for, we don't weep for them at all. Like our devotion to God should be so great. And yet if, we, if it's not there, we don't weep for it at all. And yet it's missing from our life. For behold, you love truth, and he who knows the truth comes to the light. Because God is truth, and he is light. So those who know the truth come to the light. This I would do in my heart before you in this confession, and in my writings before many witnesses. Two. What is there in me? that could be hidden from you, O Lord, to whose eyes the depths of man's conscience is bare. So there's nothing hidden from God. Nothing. How can, he says, what can be hidden from you? Your eyes penetrate the depths of our conscience. Even though I do not confess it, so even if we do not say out loud our sins, God knows our sins. Even if we keep silent about them. I might hide you from myself, but I cannot hide myself from you. But now my groanings bear witness that I am displeased with myself and that you shine brightly and are pleasing, beloved, and desired. You, O oh God, are pleasing, beloved, and desired. I am ashamed of myself and renounce myself and choose you. For I can neither please you nor myself except in you. And that's a good thought for to meditate upon, is that we can't please ourselves nor God except in Jesus, in God. And that's why I labeled this class, named this class, Steps in a Journey, because we are journeying in God through the eternal life. And we can't do anything except through Him, in Him. He gives us our words. He gives us our talents. He, 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 everything we have is through Him. Therefore I am open to you, O Lord, with all that I am. And whatever benefit may come from my confession to you, I have spoken. I do not confess merely with words and fleshy sounds, but the words of my soul and the cry of my thoughts, which your ear knows. For when I am wicked, confession to you is nothing more than to be displeased with myself. But when I'm truly devout, it is to describe glory to you. Because you, Lord, bless the godly, but first you justify him who is ungodly. And the footnote here says, this is from Romans 4, chapter 4, verse 5. Augustine understands justifico in the sense of making actually just, righteous. He recognizes the possibility of interpreting the word in the sense of being reckoned just, but uniformly adopts the former interpretation of making a person just. So, 
we we as humans may reckon someone as just but God can make a person just let's see my confession then oh my God is made both silently and yet not silently for in sound it is silent but in affection it cries aloud for I neither utter any right thing to others which you have not already heard from me nor do you hear any such things from me which you have not first said to me so nothing is new under the sun nothing is new to God he when, when you utter something that for others to hear God already knows it and God already has heard it because he's put the thoughts in your mind chapter 3 but what do I have to do with men that they should hear my confessions as if they could heal all my infirmities they are a race curious to know the lives of others and slow to amend their own and isn't that the way it is where we're anxious to hear the the gossip about other people or what makes them tick but we're very slow to amend our own lives and he says why do they seek to hear from me where I am who will not hear from you what they themselves are and how do they know when from me they hear of myself how do they know whether I speak the truth since no man knows what is in man but the spirit of man which is in him so when I tell people about God how do they know they're speaking the truth in fact I wrote that in my book and it almost looks like um, uh, challenge let's catch Kathy telling a lie because she says this book is written for the on the truth my book song of hope is written on the truth well let's catch her in a lie and that makes the whole book untrue and that's that's lots of times they're trying to they look at the Bible and try to find some untruth in it to say see God is not true this Bible is not true but no one uh, no one can say when 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 they open up to let the Lord examine their conscience the Lord does not lie and they know it for what is it to hear from you of themselves but to know themselves if you hear from the Lord and your examination of conscience you know it and that's by knowing yourself when the Lord speaks to you and who knows and says that's false unless he lies to himself but because charity believes all things this is from scripture charity believes all things this is love and God is love so when you read this know that he's also talking about God even though he's saying charity because charity believes all things at least among those whom it knits together with itself as one and that's what we hope to be is knit together with as one with God and and we who who successfully join our lives with God's it says I too Lord will confess to you in such a way that men will hear though I cannot prove to them that my confession is true yet those whose ears are opened by me to me in charity will believe me so those who are opened whose ears are opened to reading these confessions 
and they're open by charity, which is by oh, by God. If your ears are open by God, they, these people will believe me. They will know. When once you've been baptized in the Spirit and you hear a good sermon, it just goes right to your your soul. It it it. Whereas before, you might not have paid any attention to it, but once. Once you've got the God in you, it's like a different person. And that's why the Bible says, you made me a new man. Uh, when, when, when you've become uh, one with God, you become a new cre creation because you hear the truth. And it just rings true. Uh, when I was first baptized in the Spirit, I could read a book or listen to a person and, and pick out one sentence. That's not true. Or I could say, uh, read it in a book. Uh, that, that's, that's their own opinion. And I can know that's the truth. And I think that's why I'm so frustrated with listening to the news nowadays is it's just their opinion. And I can tell it's their opinion. It's not necessarily the truth that they are dickering about, arguing about in front of the camera. Uh, and, it's, and it's a gift of the Lord that God gave me is I could hear it and, and point, pick it out. I could... Uh, that's why Harry Potter books upset me so much is because I, I just read the first one, but it, it just sprang out to me the, the uh, wrong impressions that it taught. And another book I read was Crispin, which is all about the Catholic religion in the Middle, Middle Ages. It's set in the, in the Catholic setting. And, and sold, especially through, uh, to Catholic schools. And yet I picked out two, two sentences. But it only, takes, it only takes one of those sentences for a child. And they'll lose their faith. One in Crispin is searching for, uh, uh, is on a quest. And he picks up a crucifix and carries it for helping him with his quest. And, he, and, and reminding him that God is leading him. But then he had to make a major decision in this quest. So he puts the crucifix behind him and says, I have to make this decision by myself. To me, that teaches kids, you can use God or pray to God for little things, but don't bother praying to Him and asking His advice and help for major decisions of your life. Just one little sentence in the book. And it goes into the unconscious of the child. Because this is the hero of the book. And at the end of the book, when, he's, when his quest is finished and he's found what he was seeking, he threw the crucifix into the dirt. He no longer needed it. That's how the book ends. This is for children. Even adults can, it goes into their unconscious. Well, I don't need Christ after my problem is over with. I don't need to pray anymore. I just, okay, my life is okay. I don't need it. So this is a, those whose ears are opened by, to me by charity will believe me. And that's one way is you believe the truth. You recognize it when you hear it. And when they read confessions and you read what Augustine writes just goes to your soul and say, wow, he's saying it so much better than I can ever say it, but he's speaking to my soul. And I, I know what he, I understand what he's saying. But, oh, my inmost physician, make plain to me what benefit I may gain by doing it. 
you have forgiven and covered my past sin uh, doing it. Okay, what he's talking about is what gain am I going to have by writing this com book, Confessions? What, what, what gain will I ha benefit will I have of telling the whole world how I think and what I've done wrong and, and how I've been with the Lord? Lord, you have forgiven and covered my past sins that you might make me happy in you, changing my soul by faith and your sacrament. So the sacrament of baptism he's talking about, the sacrament of also communion changes our life. In fact, all the sacraments do. They change your life. When my confessions of them are read and heard, they stir up the heart. No longer does it sleep in despair and say, I cannot, but awakes in the love of your mercy and the sweetness of your grace, by which whoever is weak is made strong. When he becomes conscious of his own weakness by it, and that's, that's, okay, he's talking about grace. With your mercy that's extended to a person, then the weak become strong when he be, they become conscious of their own weakness through grace given to them. And the good delight to hear the past evils of those who are now freed from them, not because they're evils, but because they were and no longer are. So when you read this or when other people tell you of the past evils that they were, that they did, and now they're no longer doing them, we rejoice. We rejoice be not because the e that, that they're freed from the evils, but main not because they were evil, but because they are no longer doing those things. Not that the evil no longer exists, but those people are free from them. And we love stories of, of people who, who were addicted to smoking and they got free of that addiction and are no longer free. And we love to hear of stories of people who are addicted to drugs and they now are no longer uh, um, under the spell of that evil. We love to hear those stories because they people were addicted to the evil and now they're free of them. What does it profit me, O oh Lord, my God? What does this book gain me to confess to men in your presence what I now am? My conscience confesses daily to you trusting more in the hope of your mercy than in its own innocence. For I have seen and spoken of the fruit of knowing what I had been, but what I now am. At the very time of making these confessions, various people want to know, both those who have known me and those who have not, who have heard from me and of me, but their ear is not at my heart. Where I am, whatever I am. They wish to hear me confess what I am within. Where neither their eye, nor ear, nor understanding can read. What is it that makes you tick what's in you? And they cannot see it. Their eye cannot see it. Their ear cannot hear it. And they wish it, ready to believe it. But will they know? For charity, which makes them good, tells them that I do not lie in my confessions. And charity in them believes me. Chapter 4 
but for what purpose do they wish to hear this? Here, for what purpose do people want to hear his confessions and know what's in him, what is inside him, what makes him tick? Do they want to rejoice with me when they hear how near by your grace I approach to you? Do they wish to pray for me when they hear how much I am held back by my own weight? To such, I will disclose myself. In the footnotes for there, This book has been called one of the most honest soul inventories extant from the ancient world. The most honest soul inventory.